now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Rola. As always, it's so great to have you with us. The continued role and future of the National Insurance Fund among the issues discussed today as top executives of NIB travel to Grand Bahama. The board members paid a courtesy call on the Ministry of Grand Bahama this morning. Joan Davis Roll reports. The visit by the new executive team of the National Insurance Board to the Ministry of Grand Bahama coming just weeks after the appointment of Father James Moutry as the board's new chairman. In his official welcome, the Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Dobble, noted that the role of NIB remains critical not only on Grand Bahama, but indeed the country. We are very fortunate to uh, discuss with the chairman some of the issues that we face at the National Insurance Board. I would like to ensure the public that uh, uh, Father Moutry is a very competent individual and his presence will be felt here in Grand Bahama to ensure that all of the principles and uh, the rules and regulations for the National Insurance Board are put in place and the resources as it relates to that fund is well secure and the fund is in good order. We also went into discussions as it relates to uh, the proposed property at the Reef Hotel and the fact that it will potentially produce about a thousand jobs which is good for the NIB board because these will all be individuals who will be contributing to the fund. Uh, the fund is healthy in Grand Bahama and despite the fact that we are experiencing some aspects of unemployment, uh, they are very happy to report that all is well at the insurance board. Following a firestorm of controversy, Father Moultrie says he sees his appointment as an awesome responsibility and gave the assurance that despite negative media reports, NIB funds in excess of $1.6 billion are secured. We at the National Insurance Board want to assure the public that the, the National Insurance Fund is in good hands. It is safe and secure. We know that this is a solemn obligation that we have to Bahamians yet unborn. We know what it means for that old lady in McLeanstown to come and claim her national insurance. We know what it means for the people of Grand Bahama who face certain challenges at this time to receive their benefits. But we also know that unless you pay your contributions on time and in full, we will be challenged. So we all have an obligation. I believe national insurance was one of the best things to ever happen to this country. We didn't all understand that at first, but we understand it now. Father Moutry says while on Grand Bahama, he was able to meet with local staff at the NIB office. His goal, he says, is to visit each island where there is an NIB presence. He says he sees his post as an extension of his overall ministry. I'm still learning the place. Um, I know that there are some challenges. I know that in the past we've, we've been in the press and not the most colorful light, but I'll tell you this, all is well at NIB. It is important that the presence of the board be felt in all the islands, and it is my intention on private visits to go to the other islands, my next island on my agenda that, that the, the fund will not pay for is Abaco. Joan Davis Roll, Saturnas Network News. A 35-year-old man was shot and killed by police over in Abaco last night. The incident took place around 7.45 last evening in the mud. Reports are that officers were on a special police operation when the shooting took place. The man was pronounced dead on the scene by the local doctor in Abaco. Now this matter is currently under active police investigation. In other news, co-chairperson of Urban Renewal, Cynthia Mother Pratt, giving an overview of the program while on a two-day tour on Grand Bahama. Tonight, she talks about partnering with businesses in the community, and she shares how you can get involved to make Urban Renewal a success for all. 
Urban Renewal 2.0 has had many success stories here on Grand Bahama. You may remember the Williams brothers who lived in substandard conditions but received help from the program, or the elderly woman on Jobson Avenue with two disabled children and a daughter suffering from AIDS, even walkabouts from east to west. But co-chair of the program says this is just the beginning. Give it time. You will wonder why hadn't this come long before now. But I believe that to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And so I'm delighted to be a part of Urban Renewal at this time. She adds that it is clear that some pockets of Grand Bahama are in need of Urban Renewal 2.0. There are some things we have to change because we want to be impactful. We, we don't want to be just be going through the motions. We, we want to make a difference. Urban renewal must be a presence felt in that community so that the children of that community could even walk right to the center. They don't even need a ride there. Speaking passionately about Urban Renewal 2.0, the co-chair is convinced the program is making a difference. She says the business community has formed a partnership with the program. It is my job to sell Urban Renewal as a credible entity so that people can buy into it and know that what they give is going to the people. There is no question they are, because a number of major sponsors have already partnered with Urban Renewal. And that will be announced very soon, and you will all see it, and you will know Mother Pratt is speaking truth and not flaming. She says while more computers and instruments are needed, those who may not be able to give financial assistance can certainly invest their time in the life of a youngster. I'm making a clarion call to all those who can assist. Maybe you might not be able to buy an instrument, but you have a gift. Maybe you can teach a child. You might be good in math. You can give an hour a week. Maybe you're good at sewing. Well, come and teach some young ladies how to sew. Maybe that's an hour a week you can give. Well, that's fine. That's more than we had. A group of local professionals continuing the fight against HIV and AIDS. Well, today was a red letter day for members of the group. Sabrina Brown has the details. It has been years in the making, but now the wheels are in motion and the Red Rose Ball Committee is beginning to see the fruits of its labor. The contract has been signed and work has begun on a multi-purpose health education center. Committee Chairman Audette Knoll says she's happy they were able to reach this significant milestone. It's been over 13 years that we pledge our support to the Red Rose Ball Committee and we want to thank our supporters for their patience and understanding, 13 years of foundation laying, 13 years of information gathering, 13 years of allowing us to entertain you, and in response, your generous support to bring us here today. She says over the years, the committee has raised some $150,000 through its major fundraiser, the Red Rose Ball. However, it will cost in excess of $300,000 to complete the project, which she believes will serve the community well. The structure will be used um, as a facility where we will offer counseling to persons living with HIV and AIDS. Also research for students at school who are working on projects as it relates to HIV and AIDS. Um, we want to be able to counsel people in an area that is more secluded that, you know, they can have some sense of comfort, you know, and, and, and being able to open up to people for pastors and so on to come in and do prayer with them. Knowles believes the resource center will be very useful to young people. We've had, we've added um, teens to our program now where we do workshops through the schools on Grand Bahama and we want to have a place where we can have we can house them rather than have to be renting. The contract was awarded to NOLA Investments, contractor Max Quant. It is a pleasure for NOLA Investments to build this building and be a part of the AIDS and the Red Rose Ball Committee. It's just under uh, just over 3,000 square foot. Uh, there's several offices in the it's a it's a multi-purpose building. Uh, there's several offices on one side and there's a 
a, a, a ballroom, I call it, on the other side. The AIDS Health Education Resource Center, located in Parnas Loop, is expected to be completed before the end of the year. Sabrina Brown, CNS Network News. Stay with us, there's more right after this.